guys, it's Miss Sheree, and today I'm not at the Northfield Library, I'm actually at the Northfield Elementary School. Today I will be reading from a very special place, the Buddy Bench. Have you ever heard of the Buddy Bench? Well, we're going to find out in this story called The Buddy Bench by Patty Brozo. Class dismissed, called Miss Mellon when the recess bell rang. Her students ran out, one loud, happy gang. They didn't waste time. Recess was too short. They started right in with their games and their sport. Look what they're playing. Ball, a kite. Some are even wearing costumes. Some boys climbed a mound playing king of the hill, but though he stood near, no one noticed Will. Molly said to Brienne, let's play foot follow the leader. They walked right by Emma, but just didn't see her. As Cooper watched hide and seek from a tree, he thought to himself, why does no one seek me? The kids played soldier with a make-believe fort, as Sloan looked on from the basketball court. Some kids are being left out. Seven kids were clowns. They acted quite silly. They paraded right past, but no one saw Lily. Jerome watched four kids playing blind man's bluff. Why can't they see me? Aren't I big enough? Three boys played with kites that flew high in the air, while Gabe sat and wondered, doesn't anyone care? The one dancing kite dropped out of the sky, and when Jake went to find it, Gabe held it up high. Want to join us, Jake asked, before recess is done? How come you're just watching? That can't be fun. It's my leg, said Gabe. I can't run in a cast. So I never got picked, not even last. Come play with us anyway. There's time to spare. Wait a minute, said Gabe. I'll be right there. Finally, someone picked him. Such a good friend. Gabe hobbled to Will and tap tapped his shoulder. Come and join us, he said, before recess is over. I'm new here, said Will, and today's my first day. No one but you has asked me to play. Well, help us keep this kite high in the air. Okay, said Will, I'll be right there. Such good friends. They're calling them over, inviting them to play. Then Will went to Emma, and Emma to Sloan, each asking the next. Why was she alone? There are holes in my pants and my shoes, Emma said. I don't fit in, and her face turned bright red. It's hard, said Sloane, to know what to say. I'm too scared to ask, but I do want to play. Come join us, said Will. There's no time to spare. Wait, said the girls. We'll be right there. They ran over to Cooper and said, what about you? We're going to have fun. Can't you play too? When I t -t talk, explained Cooper, m my words get t tangled. What I want to say ends up all mangled. So what? Come and play, the two girls said. I'll come in a m m minute. You go on ahead. Cooper's a little different, but they still wanted him to play with them. And that's what good friends do. Then Cooper asked Lily, and Lily asked Jerome, how come each of them was alone? Lily told Cooper, it's always the same. I'm used to just watching. I'm no good at games. When you're small, said Jerome, and the game is all tied, nobody wants you to be on their side. Come and play, said Cooper. D d don't hang back and wait. Let's make some new friends. 
it's never too late. So the kindness is passing on. But recess was over. The bell rang once more, and Miss Mellon's students ran for the door. Uh oh. Miss Mellon will ask, how could we say, without using words, that we all want to play? Sometimes we're too shy, too sad, or too proud. How can we ask without asking out loud? Miss Mellon said, what you need is a seat to wait for a friend or a buddy to meet. A buddy bench, Miss Mellon's class all agreed, and we'll all make it ourselves. So they borrowed a hammer, a saw, a wrench, and they started to work on their own special bench. Bang, bang, bang. The little construction workers. When it was finished, we all filled with pride. Each child wore a smile that was nine inches wide. We think it's just perfect, the students all said, with hands that colored blue, yellow, and red. They put their new bench in the very best place, under the climbing tree, right at its base. So not only did they all work together to build it, they all decorated it with their own hands in pretty colors and put it right under this tree. Now everyone knows when they're feeling left out, where to find friends without any doubt. And the words on the bench that they made on their own say, buddy bench equals no one is alone. I hope you enjoyed this story. And I hope you have a buddy out there and can be a buddy to someone else. See you next time.